welcome to the 6 o'clock news, I'm Scott Bradshaw. Devastating events unfold just to the west of our city as a sixth person has now been added to the list of those who are missing. The city rests with uneasy panic as people seem to be vanishing into the thin of the air. Beloved resident Tracy Jefferson was last seen leaving work 8 o'clock last Friday night. We spoke with Tracy's mother and here's what she had to say. Um, we don't know what to do. We just don't. She's our daughter. We love her. We're very concerned. We're very scared. Maybe it's too late. Maybe it's too late for all of them. We keep our hope alive. But we really wonder if it's too late. After speaking with the chief of police, he is urging everyone to remain in pairs when going outside, especially after dark. What did you do, Jay? It's the we had a movie. Fully filmed, produced, edited. It was gonna win awards, man. We had Dan Aykroyd, Ving Rains. <laughs> Is any of it left? Yeah. How much? Everything you just saw. Well, this is just great. Everything we worked for right down the drain. No, it's, it's, it's okay. Because we can do it again and make it even better. Do it again? I had a hard time getting the loan from the bank the first time around. And I don't foresee them handing me a fancy chunk of cash the second time. Well, what are we going to do? There's nothing we can do. Maybe we could reshoot it at a lower budget. We're Braxton and JR. We can't get any lower than we already have. be a way to fix it. It's a brilliant Daniel! story. It needs to be told. Ah, oh, forget about it. They can buy the book and read it Daddy! for themselves. Where would they get it? It's available what? via oh. chapters, Indigo, Barnes and Nobles, get and the, the internet. Really? 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 Uh. Yeah, really. <sighs> you chubby slap. Don't you roll your eyes at your mother. You lazy ass. Now get the hell out of here. Mom, can we order pizza or something? I'm really bored. Why don't you just go play with yourself or something? I ain't got no money. I'm really bored. I'm really bored. Oh, I'm really bored. I'm really bored. Danny. You must follow my voice. Come hither, young Danny. It's your destiny, destiny, destiny.
What? Jenny. Allow me to congratulate you on the completion of your great adventure. It is to my understanding that many magnificent challenges fell upon your brontosaurus shoulders. But you rose to each and every occasion. Your never-ending faith and dedication in regards to your destiny is the reason why Earth will still be in existence many years from now. The people will remember you and sing many ballads in honor of your name. Ah, I can see the curiosity nestled upon your face. It lays fresh between your whiskers like warm piss in the snow. It must be that you wish to know the reason for being here. Why you have been chosen to approach my throne on this horizontal day. This historical day. Your journey is complete. Yes, this is true. However, your quest still remains unaccomplished. For there is a reason in which you were summoned, Danny. You must pass the remote. Really? Yes, really? How dare you roll your eyes at me, you childish slut? You shall pass me! No, I'm not going to get your remote. But I am going to change the channel. Bitch. Hey guys. <laughs> Shut up. What are you dressed like that for? This always dress. Since when? Since he started hanging around with Alex. Who the f is Alex? Never mind that. Supper's ready. Who the fuck is Alex? He's the new guy at work. Moved here from Saskatchewan. Why did he decide to move here? He says he moved here to help take care of his auntie because she wasn't feeling well. But then she got better and moved to Calgary and guess he's stuck here. It's a weird story. No, it's not. Klein's just not telling it right. Well, then how do you tell it? Okay, so his auntie got sick and she said she needed someone to come help, take care of her. That's what she said. So he said he could come do that. So he packed up and headed this way. When he almost got here, she got better. But it was too late to tell him to turn around. So when he got there, she explained what happened and said for him to stay there while she goes back to Calgary and her sisters. Well, thank you for that. Shoot. What's the matter? I gotta go meet Alex. Wait, what do you have to meet Alex for? I'll see you losers later. What does he have to meet Alex for? That I don't know, but what I do know is that I don't like it. Hey Clayton, why don't you take a look at what I found in Daniel's pants? 
I knew it. You knew he had this? No, I knew he was getting into trouble. Well, what do you think he had it for? I think him and Alex are planning a robbery. Well, what makes you think that? Because I didn't believe the whole Saskatchewan story that Alex told. So, I did some research, and turns out he never came from Saskatchewan at all. He's actually escaped from a maximum security prison. What was he in prison for? For robbing banks and grocery stores. <sighs> now he's talked Daniel into that direction. We gotta stop him. Well, if the gun's here, that means he's not doing it now. And when he comes back for it, I can intervene. Okay. And while you're doing that, I'll go out and look for him. It sounds all right with me. Hey, Daniel. Not now, Gary. I don't have time. You looking for something? No. You sure? You were searching my room? No, you left it in your trousers. Found it when I was doing the laundry. Tell me what the hell is going on. Never mind. It's nothing you'd understand. Give me the gun. No. No. Give me the gun, Gary. I'm not giving you the gun, Daniel. Gary, I've known you a long time. And you've known me for just as long. And in all those years, Never have I ever thought about hurting you. But if you don't give me that gun right now, I'm going to think about it, Gary. And I'm going to think about it real hard. You're not getting the gun. Just give me my fucking gun. You can get it back when you decide to grow up. So, what's going on? What does it look like? I'm running away. From what? From everything. Well, where are you gonna go? I'm gonna go talk to Al. He'll know what to do. I don't think that's going to work. And that's why you're not coming. No, that's not why. Then why? Because Alex is gone. He wouldn't leave. Not without saying goodbye. But he did. The cops came and got him earlier. What would the cops want with him? Well, do you remember the story that he said about staying at his auntie's house? Yeah. Well, that story was a lie. Turns out he didn't even have an auntie. He escaped from a maximum security prison. Huh? Uh-huh. I can't believe he lied to me. Hey, man. It happens. I feel bad now. I gotta go talk to Gary. But why? Because I have an apology for him. Hey, Gary. Sorry about the way I've been acting and how I've been treating everybody. Daniel, I'm proud of you. What you just did. That took a lot of courage. Thanks, man. Hey, Daniel. One more thing. Wait, Gary, there's one more thing. I'm not going to be needing this. Not where I'm going. Oh. 
Where are you going? I'll send you a postcard. Here's to something I should have done a long time ago. Yar, there's me treasure. Freeze, asshole. I should have supposed you would be here. Cut the chit chat and back away from the treasure. Yar, I'm afraid I can't do that. Well, then I'm afraid you're gonna have to die. Seems a bit extreme, even for you. Then shut your stallywagon mouth and get the fuck over here. All right, hold your fire. I'll comply, just don't shoot. Don't you dare shoot. I'm being a good boy. And that's what you get for fucking with my treasure. And it's all mine now. <laughs> Indistinct chatter. What's that you say? Indistinct chatter. That's great. Quick. Cut. What are you doing? I'm reading my lines. I can see that. But the thing is, you're not supposed to say indistinct chatter. But that's what it says. Yes, this is true. It does say that. But um, that's not quite what it meant. It's uh, more supposed to be the indistinct chatter. Make monkey noises. So you want me to make monkey noises? Yeah. But all my lines are indistinct of chatter. Correct. So... I'm just supposed to make monkey noises? You got it. Ready to give it a go? No. No? No, I'm not doing it. What's the matter? I stayed up all night memorizing these goddamn lines, and now you got me here on the spot? I, uh, didn't realize it wasn't clear. Uh, how about you be a better writer, and I'll read the lines you wrote, but I'm not making monkey noises. If you want... Hire yourself a monkey. Ah, it's nice to see you're awake. I wasn't certain the operation would be a success. What? Operation? What happened? Where am I? My companion here found you dying in the caves. We were hoping you would be able to fill us in on what had happened. I, uh, I can't remember. Perhaps it will come in time. Where am I? I was waiting for that question. What do you mean? It was the first thing I asked when I woke up. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. You're delusional. It's just part of the medication. I am not, and I will argue all day. 
Fine, hold on. Yeah? I got a question about the movie. Yeah, what is it? Could you back it up a bit? We wanted to see something. Sure. My companion here found you dying in the caves. We were hoping you could fill us in on what had happened. He didn't even go back far enough. Damn it! Hold on. You don't have to do this. It doesn't even matter. All I want to know is where I am. I'm on the phone. Yeah. You didn't put it back far enough. Well, what do you want to see? The cop says he asked where he was when he first woke up, and I don't believe that he did. As a matter of fact, I know he didn't, and we were just looking to prove it. Well, he did ask that. What? When he woke up, he asked where he was and uh, what happened, in which you proceeded to briefly inform him of uh, the latter. No, no, that didn't happen. Back it up. It doesn't matter. Can we please just get on with the show? It matters to me. I'm tired of people telling me I'm wrong. Ah, it's nice to see you're awake. I wasn't certain the operation would be a success. Where am I? What? What happened? You said it doesn't matter, so I don't see what the big deal is. That was all you, Doc. Whatever. You were right, okay? Can we just get on? Please do. Thank you. Like I said, my companion here discovered you dying in the caves, so he brought you back to my laboratory in the jungle. Thank you to you and your your companion for saving me. I wouldn't go as far as calling you saved. <laughs> it was more of a A rescue. What do you mean? When you arrived on my operating table, you were faced with zero chances of survival. No flesh was left upon your bones. I had to make some changes. Changes? What kind of changes? Over time, I hope you will see them as changes for the better. What have you done to me? Edgar, go fetch the mirror. Indistinct chatter. I hope you'll understand what was necessary in order for you to survive. Like I said, there wasn't much left of you, so I had to take something. Something that I had much left of. Options were limited, but they were available. Indistinct chatter. Ah, good. He's back. Have a look for yourself. Careful. You have a new body. It's going to take some getting used to. You should have left me to die. Why did you do this to me? If I were to let you die, whoever tried to kill you would never be revealed. Justice would never prevail. Did you forget what you signed up for when you put on that uniform? How can I seek a culprit when I can't even seek myself? I don't even know who I am. You are Lion Cop. And now we just need to explore what's left of your memory. I was a cop. And I was a damn good one. I was working a case. There was a treasure thief. He had been breaking into caves and stealing treasures. I figured out where he was going to hit next, and I waited out for him. Sure enough, he showed up. That's where it stops. I can't remember what he looks like. You're forgetting something. What's that? You're a lion. You have higher senses. You don't have to remember looks. You mean I can use my... Yes. Remember what he smells like. When I was 12 years old, my best friend had a sleepover. He happened to get in the refrigerator. It was around Christmas time and it was stocked full of eggnog. Well, we got to drinking that nog and drank entirely way too much. 
When you drink as much as we drank, with our bodies as small as they were, we weren't quite capable of processing it through. There were no other options. We had a garbage can nearby, so he just blew his chunks into that. It wasn't long after that my stomach started to stir. I don't know if it was because its time had come or if it was instigated by the situation my friend was in. Either way, we filled that bag up and passed out. The next morning, we woke up to a garbage bag full of upchucked eggnog and pieces of food we had eaten. The man smelled like that. There's only one man I can think of that would smell that way. And that would be a man of the sea. What are you saying? I think you were assaulted by a pirate. Do you know any? There's one who lives not far from here. It shouldn't take you long to get there. Lions are fast as fuck. Tell me how to get there. And just like that, I got myself another treasure. <laughs> how did you find me? You should have washed behind your ears. This isn't right. You're supposed to be dead. I'm also supposed to be human. Where is the treasure? You'll never take it from me. Where is it? Fool, your heightened senses made you blind to what mattered most. Catching the bad guy is all that matters. How long? How long? How long has this been going on, our little charade of cat and mouse? Long time, but it ends here. And what will matter after that? There will always be a bad guy. Yeah, but will there always be a pirate? Never again! It's like I always said, the only way anyone gets their hands on my treasure is when I'm dead. If you're reading this, then it is my understanding that those words have rung true. With that being said, I know of only one person capable of completing such a task. Congratulations, Lion Cop. You have finally reached your goal, but in doing so, have you reached success? My whole life has been sailing the seas whilst collecting treasures along the way, while your whole life has been a thorn at my side. Yet, little did I know, it was a thorn I required. It was the thorn that gave me life. It was the thorn that kept me alive. It was the thorn that allowed me to understand who I was. And now here you stand alone. Just you and your stupid glory. A victorious day with no one to share it with. You're about to receive a clear understanding of who you are. With the bad guy gone, you can go home. But do you even know where that is? Yeah, as far as I remember, you've always been right behind me. And not once have I ever settled in one spot, which means neither have you. But more importantly, once you get to wherever you decide to go, what are you going to do? There is nothing out there for you. You spent so much time nipping at my heels that you've forgotten who you are or who you were ever supposed to be. Without me, you're a nobody with nothing to do until the end of time. When I died, a piece of you died with me and now all that's left are the memories. Yet, in the end, that's all that ever mattered because that's all that's ever left behind. You opened this box with hopes of finding rubies, silvers, and gold, but find nothing more than a note in mixed emotions as you come to the understanding that the treasure was never an object, but it was the adventure, 
the quests, the journeys, the chases, the battles, the memories made. Goodbye, Lion Cop, and thank you for your camaraderie. Nestled in the deepest regions of the Canadian forest, the Argi is found to be most comfortable, for this is his home. Working together in packs of families is the only way they are able to survive. Their existence heavily relies upon the assistance of other Argies. In the Middle Ages, the grove used to flourish with these loving, cuttable creatures, but as time passed on and generations became less and less tolerable, the Argies chose to live their lives in a lesser existence. They survive off many type of leaves found on the many trees amongst the fading wilderness. Each Argy family come in gorbals of five. There is the Daddykin's Argy, whom is responsible for maintaining order in the family nest and providing protection. He is also responsible for electing rules and regulations that the Argies of his household must obey and follow. The Momzo Argy is second in command of the nest. She is allowed to create rules to establish order at particular times, but said rules can and usually will be reversed when the situation subsides. The Argies exist in peace when seen amongst others within the community, and especially when viewed from other communities. The reason for this is because of the Daddykins and Momzo Argi's ability to maintain order within their home. When order is established at home, it carries into the happily lit community. Brosef Argi is the most respected of the Argies. He sets a prime example of how Argies are supposed to behave and brings along a personality that attracts a pleasant attention. Sestino Argi is the most protected of the Argi clan. She is very capable of producing a high-pitched squeal which entices others to comply with her demands. She uses this technique to acquire absolutely anything she desires. The final member of the Argi clan is Baby Argi. Baby Argi is perhaps the most important member, for he is the provider for the family. At night time, he ventures out into the wilderness to collect the things they will need to survive throughout the day, while during the day, he is out seeking the items necessary for their survival throughout the night. Being as sleek and nimble as they are, the Argi need not worry about predators, for their quick thinking and maneuvers carry them through the thickest and toughest of situations. There is, however, one critter who is fully capable of Argy destruction, and that culprit is the North American house cat. The house cat is the only known creature ever to successfully attack an Argy every single time. Their methods are sadistic, chaotic, and cruel. Dear whomever is responsible for this bumbling project, as much as I have seen, it has become incredibly dreaded for me to witness any further seconds of this monstrosity you call a film. I was capable to bear through the first handful of minutes to get to this point, but now it's gone beyond ridiculous. It troubles me to think that you actually believe that people will find truth in regards to the existence of these, these creatures. Your theories are insane. Your logic is atrocious. The simple fact that you expect anyone to believe this is beyond comprehension. I would love to sit and waste more of my time viewing the so-called 
masterpiece, but I got plenty of more things to take care of on my agenda. For example, I most recently painted my apartment. Hey, it's me. Barry? Yeah. I'm, I'm calling about that uh, favor you owe me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I need bad. What's the reason? I got a problem. I ain't that something. For the first goddamn time in Barry's history, he can't handle something on his own. What do you mean I can't handle it on my own? He always been a problem to me. Now I suppose you can get a taste of yourself. This is a bigger problem than me. Bigger problem than you? Are you serious? Yeah. Hi. What do you need me to do? Well, I'm going to need you to send in the specialist. It's that serious? Yeah. All right, all right. I can help. Oh. Jerry is on his way. Oh, wow. And don't bother getting up. What do you mean? He let himself in. He's here already? <laughs> so 
there you have it, children. Always be leery when it comes to Argies. And under- Hey! What the fuck are you doing? Excuse me? What the fuck are you doing? You got some balls. Yeah, most heroes do. You're a hero? Yeah, I just so happen to be. Who have you even saved? The Maiden of Ellerslie, the Princess of Kalahu, and the Mayor of Spruce Grove. Why are you here? Because you're out here being a jackass telling these awful stories. They are not awful. They're bullshit. Argies aren't even like that. How would you know? Because they're not real. Now get the fuck out of here before I pick up the coffee table and smash it on your toe. This is my place. I don't give a damn whose place this is. I just don't want to hear any more of your stories. And I don't want to hear that you've been telling these stories. Not anymore, you understand? Because if I have to come back here, there ain't going to be no more talking. I'm just going to come marching in and beat you down so bad, your face is going to look like a used carton of scrambled eggs. You're a piece of shit for saying that. You remember what I told you. And if you feel the need not to mind what I said, you just remember the hand that struck your face not so long ago. Eat them snake boys. Casey was her name, and she, she came out of like this corner and jumped on a speaker, and and then all these other chicks started to follow her. It was chaos, and and uh. And then all of a sudden, uh, we heard this loud, loud bang, and it was one of the front doors that came open. You know what happened? All of a sudden, there was like a thousand dudes that rammed into the building, but I couldn't tell what was going on until a, a seconds after. I didn't notice it, but they were just a bunch of... Can I say the N-word? No. Um, so there's a bunch of super-duper black guys out there. And they were running towards Stacy on a speaker. That was so awesome. You should have saw it. Are you even listening to me? And put your phone down. I don't know, a lot of story to tell. But it's crazy. It's just all over the place. So like, and then I was just like, oh my god, are you kidding? Like, is everybody kidding? What's going on here? Stacey How is that a refreshing to think talking to you? But I've been seeing people. So you know what people are thinking? Have you seen the clubhouse? Sir. Smart. Good sleep. You guys like eggs, right? Oh my god, I love eggs! Chicken egg? Mm -hmm. You nasty bitch! <sighs> you ever get mad? No, like really mad? No, like really, really mad? So mad that you get angry? When that happens to me, I like to go to my special spot. That's JR's kingdom. Because in there, I'm special, and I'm the king. Oh, hey, so glad you guys are here. I don't believe what this bitch tried to trick me into eating. It made me so mad, so mad that today I want to talk about feelings. You know, good, bad, happy, sad, angry, excited, erections. Oh, I just, I just feel so angry at times, you know? And it makes me more angry. What are some of the things that make you angry? Popcorn. When my mom canceled the cable because I was watching Showcase Without Borders. Ice cream cakes. I was uh, seven years old, waiting for my eighth birthday around the corner. Um, everybody was planning my birthday party. I was really excited. Uh, my family uh, was so busy planning that they forgot ice cream cake which of course was my favorite at the time not so much anymore but uh, they forgot the cake so my uncle was coming in out of town and 
being the quick thinker he was, he thought, hey, why don't we go grab you an ice cream cake? So we thought, yeah, that'd be a great idea. Stop this I imagine a little bit sooner of an idea. Uh, could have gone better. Uh, a little bit later could have been better. But we're getting ready and Michael says, uh, grab your jacket. It's sunny out. Why do I need my jacket? Well, I'll just grab your jacket. You know how grown-ups are. They think they know everything. And Well, until I grew up, I mean, I probably didn't know shit either. But anyways, um, so we go to the car. And uh, so I'm getting excited. We pull into the parking lot. It's pretty busy there, but not busy enough. We couldn't find a spot. So my uncle pulls in just off to the side from the, sto from the door. And uh, I jump out and of course I'm following the little ice creams and Dennis and Menace on the sidewalk and we get up to the door and he opens the door for me. I feel a cold breeze on my face from the air conditioning. It's so hot outside in this jacket. It's so crazy to wear a jacket outside in the sun. He asks what I want. I point to the Ghostbusters cake. And uh, so the lady brings it in and says, 19.99 please. So my uncle reaches into his pocket, grabs some change, and uh, that's when it all happened. The door flung open, two guys came marching in there with guns. Um, one of them had a Bill Clinton mask, one of them looked like, uh, I think it was Richard Nixon. Before they could say anything, everybody was dropping on the ground. Um, I can't remember if I dropped on the ground or not, I was too busy pissing my pants there. Uh, but I do know that my uncle stood tall. He was a, a real brave stoic man. Yeah, he stood, stood his ground. And uh, that's when I think the robbers thought it was probably going to be a problem for them, because uh, one of those bastards decided to shoot him. Everybody was... Uh, I was in shock for moments. Uh, I remember uh, seeing my uncle's jaw shatter in front of me. The blood, there's so much blood, it was all over the cake. It was, yeah, it was so warm, I just remember the cake melting from the blood. Um, I don't know how long I stood there. Um, uh, next thing you know, I just remember the cops were there and I was standing outside. I don't know if I walked there. I don't know if someone carried me there. Um, I know it was raining cats and dogs out there though. Thank God for my jacket. Sometimes after I get angry, I feel sad. I don't like that. What are some of the things that make you sad? Buses. When mom doesn't give me bingo money. When I see the turtles get those bottle things around their neck. Uh, poutine makes me sad. When the online kids call me nigger. It's got so much potential. But, uh, you know, you get excited for it. You're waiting for it to come to the table. You're thinking it's going to be steaming hot. When my socks get wet. And it's usually lukewarm. And the cheese is rubbery and cold and gross. And yeah, it never lives up to expectations. When I feel sad. Sometimes I cry, and after I cry, sometimes I feel happy. What are some of the things that make you happy? Uh, grass makes me happy. Sleeping in on the weekdays. Loose women. Not like marijuana. Well, that could make me happy too, but yeah, just grass. Fine trick. The little Barbie dolls that you can take the dresses off of. Feelings are so crazy. You know what that means. It's time for arts and crafts. Today's craft is something that'll help you feel happy when you're angry or sad. Today, we're making a joint. What you'll need first is some rolling papers, a bud buster, and some weed. You take the buster, you put the weed into the buster, you put the lid on, and you give it a little twist. Once you have your weed into little pieces, you want to put it inside your paper. So once it's inside your paper, you want to roll it. You spread the weed apart evenly so it makes a nice joint. And it's my favorite part here. You lick the glue on the paper. That's what makes it stick. You give it just a little twist here and there, a little bit of love, and voila! 
you have yourself a joint. Hey, J. 
JR. Um, just want to let you know, you did really good today. I'll talk to you tomorrow.